Hi, Cy and Cy here from Music Radar. Today we've got a table full of Volkers. And why is that? Yeah, well, we wanted to talk about, uh, so not some new gear for once, some old gear. Uh, specifically gear that is 10 years old. So it's 10 years uh, this the year birth. since Korg first released uh, their first Volker. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked, three Volkers. Yeah, so it? I looked this up, um, the, the Volker bass. Volker Keys and Volker Drum. The yeah. reviews that we run on Music Radar landed, I think, October 2013. Yeah. So we're kind of just over a full decade. Yeah. And they they appeared in FM. I know this because this was my first week on the job. Yeah. It was the photo shoot. It was in September. So they appeared in that issue. So, so we're talking, yeah, yeah, pretty much exactly a decade since the first Volker was hit the market. Mm -hmm. So we thought, let's talk about the Korg Volkers. Let's talk about whether they're still worth buying today. Yeah. Let's talk about why they've been influential and for absolutely no reason, let's just rank them. We're going to rank them. We're not going to rank say... all of them. We're going to rank maybe the top five. Yeah, we're going to tell you our favourites. Yeah, a um, couple of notable mentions. Maybe the odd sort of um, one you should maybe steer clear of. Um, but yeah. Quick recap, what are Volkers? Specifically, where do we start with these? All right, so Korg Volkers, let's give you a bit of background to think back 10 years ago. Yep. So what the synth market was kind of like then. So Korg had already released a couple of like really small, really affordable little bit, little gadget type things back then. Yeah. So we had the um, Monotrons, yep. uh, Monotron Delay, which is still, you can still get, are still really cool little duo things. you can still get as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's these, the monotrons, if you're not aware of them, are like these little tiny analog ribbon controlled synth yeah. things. They're kind of cheap and cheerful, make some weird sounds. They're mm. not like the most versatile things, but no. they're quite cool and they were really cheap. After that, they bought uh, Korg brought out something called the Monotribe, Tribe, yeah, yeah, which was kind of like an evolution of that and basically a precursor to the Volker, which was like a little uh, kind of mini analog groove box. Again, it was yeah. kind of cheap. It was kind of limited, but. Bit bigger than these guys. Bit cool, yeah. A yeah. little bit bigger, a yeah. little bit less flexible in a way. Yeah. But that was coming up. That was all coming out of like the the noughties kind of synth mm -hmm. market. So late nineties, early noughties, back in that time, there was like a lot of virtual analog synths, yes. things like the Novation Novas, the Microcorgs, things like that. Yeah, and the Electribes, the original Electribes. Yeah, so so like kind of the whole realm of analog. It's not that analog synths weren't available or weren't cool. But definitely at like the cheaper end of the market, you didn't really have, like you certainly didn't have cheap analog synths really. Mm. You didn't really have that much in the way of like small and cheap bits of hardware like you do now. No. no. Like you, you thinking kind of things those like Dave Smith had the Tetras and things yeah, like that, which yeah. were kind of, kind of a bit smaller, kind of a bit cheaper. But the, in compared to now, like today, where obviously you've got like all of these cool Roland mini synths and yep. pocket operators and Volkers mm. and things like that. Mm. There wasn't really that no. at this time. They basically kicked off a revolution. Yeah, so way. that's kind of why the Volkers are still... That's why they're important and that's why they're worth talking about is mm. because they're the kind of things that ushered in a lot of these kind of cheap and cool bits of hardware we have yeah. today. So the first Volkers, uh, they were yeah announced in 2013. Uh, the first three were the Volker Beats, Beats. Volker yeah. Bass yeah. and yep. Volker Keys, uh, all of which... Um, you can kind of guess what they do from their names. Volker Beats was a little um, multi-part drum machine. Uh, it was analog, or had at least some analog sounds in it. Um, kind of took a few cues from classic Ronan things. It had a design that looked a little bit, a uh, little bit kind of 808-ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah then you yeah. got the Volker Bass, uh, mm -hmm. like this one here. Again, design that's kind of got a little bit of a hint of the 303, yeah. and the name, as you can tell, is kind of a, well, it's a bass synth. The knobs are a bit of a giveaway, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the Volker Keys, which doesn't doesn't really kind of reference a classic bit of hardware quite so much. No, at the time it was a bit of an outlier, wasn't it? Because these were very much like, you know, um, things we recognise. And yeah. the Keys was a bit sort of slightly different, but, but nonetheless very cool. But the thing that was kind of um, 
sort of game changer, I guess, about them at the time is these were all analog, yeah, and they were all landing for prices around like 120 pounds, I think, yeah. uh, 150 dollars, I think, was yeah, what they yeah. first launched yeah. at. And like, so the the Volker Keys is like a four voice, proper four voice analog synth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in a small little container like that, but it's a genuine analog synth for that price. Same Volker bass, yeah, it's like three oscillator analog bass synth for under $150. Which still by and today's Volker standards. Beats, yeah, again, like analog value. drum sounds. Yeah. Proper proper drum hardware at that price, which was like, it was a big deal then. Like mm -hmm. you say, it's still, you know, it's still pretty impressive now. Yeah, yeah. So what do all these Volkers have in common? They're all, as you can see, they all come in basically the same size container, which to use a completely outdated reference kind of reminds me of like a VHS tape. Yes, it in terms does. Of size yeah. and shape. Yeah. Um, which again, you're gonna to have to look up what a VHS tape is. <laughs> but they all have these, a few shared features. So all of these Volkers, they all have um, built-in speakers, so yep. you can kind of just hear them straight out of the box. They all run um, on, you can run them on AA batteries. If I can, six, six of them? Yeah, six AA's if I can take this off. There we go. Yeah, so you can pop six AA's in the back. And they came batteries included. They come batteries included. You can also plug them into a uh, nine volt, uh, yeah power adapter which doesn't come in the box. No, uh, the Korg sell that separately, don't they? They all have these, um, most of them other than the Vulcan modular, which we'll come on to later, all have uh, MIDI inputs. Yeah. And that was something that was quite a big step up from like the Monotribe and- Yeah, uh, they were very much on their own. They were like locked in, weren't they? Yeah, by adding these like MIDI inputs, you suddenly turns these little synths into something that's a bit more usable in the yeah. studio, because mm -hmm. like, You've got, they've all got the another feature they've all got here is this little um, touch uh, sensitive kind of sequencer keyboard, keyboard controller. Yeah. Also controls a few parameters and things like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. which is a yeah a common feature across all of them in some form. Um, the the Volker keys here's got a bit and the and Volker the FM. FM have kind of got slightly bigger, more keyboard like ones. Yeah, and they, they, these they cram a couple you know couple of octave on it. Uh, yeah. plus and. A little bit usable, not entirely. Yeah, they're a little bit usable, but yeah, those having those MIDI inputs means that you can actually, you know, plug a proper MIDI controller in, plug pump some MIDI out of your DAW yeah, or whatever, yeah. and actually use them properly in the studio. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they all have is these uh, sync in and out ports, which are little analog synth, like uses uh, kind of analog style pulse synth, so it sends like a little kind of yeah. pulse trigger Pop, so that yeah. you can sync the clocks um, mm -hmm. between multiple Volkers or like a hardware synth or a drum machine or like a modular rig. Yeah. And then they all have this kind of little mini out, mini jack output, which is basically yeah. the, the only audio output other than the built-in speaker mm -hmm. on all mm -hmm. of them. So that's basically the kind of key char characteristic of these Vol the whole Volker range. Yeah. So ever since, the, um, ever since these Volkers first launched in 2013, there's always been this kind of thing of like you'll get naysayers and detractors kind of talking about these being just like toys. toys. Yep. Like I said, you can plug them in, you can use them in the studio, but there are like, there's limitations, the small audio outputs, the fact they're small, fiddly. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see the point of people being like, hey, this isn't a serious bit of music making gear. But A, they sound great. Mm -hmm. They're really good. They're really useful. The, I think the argument of people saying anything is like a toy, is, you know, Depends how you use it. Also, the fact that over the years, the amount of genuinely brilliant artists who've yes. made music using these and continue to, I think, kind of completely, yeah. Yeah. like, writes off any criticism that they're not serious bits of music gear. So we yeah. were talking about this earlier. Like, so, so for example, a couple of years I saw um, Octo Opta, yeah, absolutely excellent house producer. She mm. was playing a live set which was basically focused largely around the Volker Keys. keys and yeah. We've had her in the mag recently, where yeah. she was talking up using Volkers in a setup uh, again. Similarly, in the in Future Music over the years, we've had Floating Points, yeah. who's, uh, for my money, one of the best producers around yeah, these days, yeah. um, and who's talked kind of openly about, I think he did a live tour of like using the Volker Beats as right. like his main yeah. drum drum machine. I'm pretty sure they've like kind of appeared on some of his tracks. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Aphex Twin, because we think Aphex Twin has probably used some, but we were trying to work out exactly yeah, where. We, I don't think we, can pinpoint exactly what he used, but possibly used during his sort of monologue sessions. Yeah, I mean, um, he's a notable Korg fan, and like, yeah. I think they probably, in all of the hundreds of things that have yeah. turned up on SoundCloud. I'm sure the more keener ear out there, who's, you know, the, the big kind of Volker heads, will probably recognise a few bits. And who else? Uh, gorillas, um, right? Gorillas, gorillas yeah, I'm pretty sure Gorillas was 
They've used some. Um, Damon Albarn, obviously. Um, throwing Snow. Yeah. Muramasa. Yeah. Um, so like some a lot of genuinely yeah genuinely brilliant genuinely mm -hmm. successful producers yeah. have made music using Cold Volker. So any argument being that like you know it's not a serious bit of music making kit is just yeah. nonsense. I mean, there's countless more. I mean, we obviously can't sort of list them all off, yeah. but yeah, like you say. And so we're going to go and we're going to rank these. It's worth saying before we rank them that aside from one thing that we're going to start with, there's not really any bad Volkers. These are all, yeah. they're all we're pretty great. We're going to that right first thing, aren't we? But yes, they are all really good fun. Yeah, really useful. the whole range is great. Yeah. And also, I hate to admit that we're being subjective because I'm very much of the opinion that we're completely right and actually anyone else whose difference for our opinion is factually wrong <laughs> yeah. but also it is just our opinion and there's yeah. quite a lot of examples where people will dispute our yeah. rankings um, yeah so so disclaimer this is this is good for the comment section we're going to pick our top five you are not going to agree with half of these we're sure so you can do your own listing and have a have a fight in the comments however i think we can all agree yeah the bottom of the pile so the, 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 <laughs> only, the only Volker that I would say genuinely I don't think is great is their mixer. So the Volker mix, which yeah. is one that was brought out about what, five or six years ago. Yeah. Which is not like, let's be fair, it's not terrible. We're not going to build big this up as being like, oh, you know, it's a no. awful bit of gear. But Volker mix, so that's the kind of outlier of the range mm -hmm. that it's basically built into this same little form factor. But what it is, is it's a mixer. So you can plug like up to three Volkers in. Yeah, just um, three. The thing that's really useful about it basically is it's got a power splitter on it, so you can use it to you can plug it into the wall and mm -hmm. use it to power three different Volkers, which yeah. is kind of handy. Mm -hmm. I'll give it that. As mixers go, there's a lot of cheap mixers on the market, and I would say that the Volker mix is like it's fine. But it's you're better off versatile. with just a, you're yeah. better off with just a cheap mixer. It can yeah. do some kind of it's got a little compressor in it, which is all right. It's got a send return thing, yeah. which is all right. I think there's better mixes. It's just all price. right. Isn't there's it? a lot of good yeah. cheap mixes out there. And that's the rest fine. of the range of Volkers completely eclipses it, I think. So that's so. our that's our kind of bottom of the pile, number yeah. ten. We yeah. go to the top yeah. five, let's rattle through the so the four that we're not including in the top five. Okay. So um what are we not including? Volker Beats, yeah. which were the original ones. Mm -hmm. So And why is that? Uh, it's a good drum machine, it's cool, it's fine. It's based on those kind of classic Roland sounds and like some of those classic Roland Sout drum machines, which shout at me for saying this, but kind of sounds a bit crap without processing on it. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm. People will definitely disagree with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. which is fine, and that's not a problem. But the thing about that is that because it's worth putting processing, particularly on things like the snare and like the kicks as well, you kind of if you, for a drum machine like that, having it all coming out of this one that's, little mini jack yeah. thing is a little bit awkward. Yeah. Now, as I was saying, we literally touched on a minute ago the fact that Floating Points, who's someone who's a great producer, was talking about doing a whole live show based on the Volker yeah. Beats. So I will quickly admit that I'm proven wrong <laughs> straight away. Yeah, I mean, it is, you know. But for me, that's that's so that's another one that's, you know, it's we've definitely got, not a bad pick. bit of, We have to Definitely pick. not a bad bit of gear, yeah. but it's not making our top five. No. Um, similarly not making our top five, the Volker Keys. Volker Keys is a... Now, this is where I fight you on this, but go on. This you is, disagree with yeah, me on this, yeah, and loads yeah, of people yeah. disagree with it. Yeah. It's a really... It's cool. It's it's a four-voice proper analogue synth for under that price. But in the years since it's come out, you've had loads of other affordable um, analogue and non-analogue synths. And mm -hmm. the Volker mm -hmm. Keys is kind of... it's a It does cool things. It's a bit weird. It does... It's got, like, a kind of nice kind of ring moddy mode and sort of unison mm -hmm. modes and things. But it's not the most versatile uh, polysynth going. It's a bit weird. It's a bit esoteric. It's that's really, why I love it. That's why I love yeah, it. Yeah, and it's very fun. It's very cool, mm -hmm. and I totally get why people love it. But it's not one that I've ever personally. It's not no, one of my I know favorites. what you mean. I know what you mean. And the reason why we're not doing two different um, <laughs> rankings here, and I agree with base, the basic top five, is because I couldn't swap it out. That was. That'd be my six. That'd be your six. six. It'd be kind of like an, a level five with, I think the kick. But you know, we'll 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 leave that. So another one in the bottom pile. There's a um, Vulcan new bass, mm -hmm. which is what which kind of came out a few years ago as a follow up to the original Vulcan bass here. So my thing about that, it's a decent Vulcan new bass is a decent little self contained bass synth. Yeah. 
But its kind of flagship um, feature is this uh, new tube. New tube thing, yeah. which basically it puts like a real tube or valve, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're on, uh, into a hardware synth, mm-hmm. which sounds like it'd be really cool. For my money, it doesn't really add anything. And I kind no. of think that's the headline feature of that one. I've n- always thought it's kind of a little bit more looks and marketing than it is really that much of, yeah. a, of an influence on the sound. Yeah. Again, if you if anyone ever offers you one and says, here's one for cheap, you've, it's you a take, great little take base. It, take great it. little yeah, base, yeah. but in our rankings, that's why it's down the it's bottom. It's got to be down there somewhere. Yeah. Right, so the final one before we get into our top five, which I'm going to give special mention to. It's very contentious, this one. Yeah, which is our most contentious uh, missing out on the top five. Yeah. The reason it's probably the most contentious is because I'm pretty sure that the uh, sample is the best-selling Volker. Yeah. It's probably the most loved one. It's the, You will find tons and tons of people online who think the Volker sample is amazing. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot that is really great about it. So... The Volker sample, it's a sample-based groove box. Uh, you can uh, record and play back up to 200 seconds of samples in it. Um, it's got this cool little analog um, isolator circuit, so you can, which is basically kind of like a filter eq kind of yeah. shelving EQ thing, yeah, yeah. Um, which is cool for shaping sounds and stuff. Why am I not putting it in the top five? Personally, I've never massively got on with the Volker sample. So this is the uh, version two. And when I say I've not got on with it, that's not to say um, I don't think it's good. We reviewed it, and generally, as a taken objectively on its own, as a little as what it is, a cheap sampler. Mm-hmm. Um, it's loads of fun, and it's you know it's very capable for the price. My problem mostly is that it's just like in my music making, I find it a bit fiddly to use as a sampler. So you can't sample directly into the Volker sample. You it comes loaded with samples, or you can load them in. Um, as of version two, using this USB thing here. Yes. Which is, you know, it's, isn't too difficult a process. Isn't too difficult, but it kind of negates the whole thing, calling it a sampler. It's not a sampler. But also, so for me, what I love about the Korg Volkers is that they're fun, immediate little yeah. things for making, generating ideas, getting sounds out of them quickly. And like the ones that, as we will go through this rankings, the ones that I think are best particularly are the ones that are kind of focused the ones that you know, where you focus on a single sound mm. and you can quite easily quickly do a a cool thing with them. And I think the Volker sample, as much as it's really flexible and it's really fun, kind of loses that a little bit. Yeah. I a bit too much manual. Yeah, I mean I can understand why people find it fun to like take out there, make little sample beats on the go or whatever. For me, I would always end up just going back to using like Ableton simpler that kind of sampling because you know dragging and dropping a sample in that is just easier yeah it's just more fun absolutely that's again just me i understand why people love it so those are the ones that aren't making our top five yep so we've got five left what are they gonna be let's rank them (laughs) okay in at number five inside number five welcome modular bit of west coast beauty this is Yeah, so the Volker Modular is a it's a bit of another outlier and an oddity within the Volker range, but it's very cool. It's, it's as so you much said, fun. it's what it's basically what we'd call a West Coast synth. So mm-hmm. West Coast synths are in the modular world at least, or in the kind of vintage synth world as well. Um, you hear people talk about East Coast and West Coast synth, referring to the US synth manufacturers. Yes. So back in the day, you would have um, East Coast, which would be uh, Bob Moog, Moog yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, which East Coast synthesis is effectively like the more common kinds of analog synthesis that mm-hmm. we know about today, like mini Moog style um, kind of wave oscillators, filters, yeah. envelopes, uh, amp envelopes. Yeah. West Coast synthesis is more associated with Don Buckler and Buckler synths. Yeah. Um, and Surge as well. And Surge as well. Yeah, yeah. And and uses uh, some slightly more 
well, nowadays, unconventional approaches, things like wave folding, which... But are sort of slowly becoming the norm. But, well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 a lot of it's coming back these yeah. days, but you've got things like wave folding, which is, um, as opposed to something like uh, pulse width modulation, wave folding effectively kind of uh, folds a wave shape in on itself to create new harmonics. Yeah. And then you get other things like function generators, which are a bit like... Uh, simple envelopes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and low pass gates which are kind of a mixture between um, an amp envelope and a filter yeah um, and these and these kind of give a different slightly different sonic approach um, so what the Vulcan modular is great for is like weird uh, little uh, weird harmonics and kind of strange tones and and this is what uh, West Coast synthesis is really good at it's it's Associated with things like microtonality yeah. and um, and kind of stranger harmonic sounds that go a little bit beyond the more conventional mm -hmm. um, harmonic tones of like East Coast synthesis. Yeah. Let's just clear this for a second. So the Vulcan modular, as the name suggests, it is modular. It comes with these little patch leads, which isn't something that you get with any other Volca. Which are hella tiny. Yeah, so that you can basically... But it works. works so it's got a, It's effectively... It's actually a semi-modular synth, so yeah. there are internal routings in it, but mm -hmm. then you can use these little patch cables to uh, modulate ele elements and reconnect things and do things like add um, portamento or uh, ring modulation and get these... Kind of cool little harmonic overtones and things. It's also got this cool little um, digital, digital reverb. It's also got a microtonal um, function in it, which means you can effectively like retune the uh, the frequency of each keyboard pitch. Yeah, which is something. Um, uh, it's kind of you know good for creating non-Western yeah. uh, tunings, but also uh -huh. something used heavily by people like Aphex Twin and yeah. stuff like that mm -hmm. for creating slightly more experimental tones and things. Um, so it's definitely the most out there and experimental yeah. of the Volkers, and definitely worth being a number five, I think. Yeah, and I, it's yeah. it's also the fact that it's been out for a few years, but the fact that you've got a an analog West Coast synth for. Uh, under well you know anywhere under 200 quid mm -hmm. in such a small form factor is still pretty amazing <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's still loads of fun it's completely out there it's completely weird and mm -hmm. it's great yeah downsides to it so the downsides to the Vulcan modular is that it's got cv inputs as you would expect with like a um a modular style synth but because of that it's the only Vulcan in the range that doesn't have a midi input yeah I mean, it's understandable why that is because of the whole modular nature, but it yeah, does mean it's a little match. bit. Yeah, I know what you mean. It does mean it's a little bit less um, straightforward to integrate into a setup than some of the other Volkers. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also you've got these patch points, and you're using these mini patch cables, which kind of hold up here. You can kind of see their little, they're tiny, tiny little wire yeah. things. But because of that, um, the Volker modular works at a at lower voltages than like a standard yeah, uh, modular like, setup. Yeah. Which means you're kind of in this slightly weird middle ground where it's it is modular and patchable, but you can't really connect it to like a wider modular no. system. If you look online, there are like people have created hacks and kind of yeah, various conversion well, things. Yeah. And if you're a kind of DIY type person, there's probably stuff that you can do to integrate it. But don't go buying a Vulcan modular thinking like, hey, I can just use this Slot as this the base my, for my yeah, big yeah. my forthcoming Eurorack system. It's a closed system. So yeah, but so it's kind fine. of. On, in its own, because we are, like we say, we're talking about these calls in their own, yeah, in their own right. So it's so it's fun and it's really cool, mm -hmm. and you can do a lot of experimenting with it. But at the same time, it's not it's not the kind of gateway into a wider world of modular. Um, per se, no, that you, you can learn some things from it that you can take away. Um, yeah, but, but still, it's a analog West Coast synthesizer <laughs> under two hundred quid. <laughs> yeah, so it's great for that. A winner. I love the color as well. Um, okay, right, let's move on. Unplug. So, Sai, so in at four, Volker Kick. Volker Kick.
So earlier what I touched on is how I like, particularly like the Volkers that like focus on one thing mm -hmm. and are uh, great for generating specific ideas around a kind of sh a, a specific kind of sound. And the Volker kick is probably the best example of this. Yeah. Whereas like a lot of the other ones have multiple voices or different um, drum sounds or whatever. Volker kick is, is effectively a drum machine, but it's a drum machine only with one sound in it. Yeah, which but that sounds, sounds a bit crazy on, on the face of it, but it's not. That sound is very cool. So what, yeah. as, as the name suggests, Volker Kick is kind of specialises in kick drums, but it's not just a kick drum machine. No. What this is here in the middle is MS-20 Resonator. So yeah. the MS-20 is one of Korg's most famous and beloved synths, mm -hmm. classic synth, and one of the things that the MS-20 is known for, uh, these really kind of gnarly, meaty sounding filters. Yeah. yeah. And so what this Resonator is here is basically a version of the MS-20 filter. So one thing the MS-20 filter can do that is really well known for is um, it can its resonance can be pushed right up so it self-oscillates, which means it creates its own tone. tones. Yeah, yeah. So what this is here is a self-oscillating MS-20 filter. So basically mm. it's, it's a really resonant filter that you can change the tuning of, you can modulate. You've got these bend and time things here. So, so we can change the bass pitch yeah. of that um, filter tone. With this bend, we can increase, uh, add a, a pitch sweep, yeah. and that time is then adjusting the um, the length of that pitch sweep. Yeah. And what that combines so to do, bill, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what that com combines to do is to create. You've got this kind of basic um, sort of raw sign uh, sign tone coming mm -hmm. from the resonant filter, but then you're adding this sweep that kind of puts this punch on it. Yeah. Which means it's great for really punchy analog kicks, but it's also really good for bass lines. So you can You've got this MIDI input and you can um, play up and down the keyboard here. So as well as doing kicks, we can do these really nice bass, kind of simple punchy basses, almost like what you'd get from an 808 hit bass in hip hop or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, or brilliant for like drum and bass subs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You've got a basic amp envelope here with an attack, which means we can kind of elongate and soften them a bit. Mm -hmm. You've got this pulse thing here and what that does is adds a little extra punch to the start, which again is really good for if you're using it to make kicks or toms, and then it's got a nice drive circuit here. So we can add, which kind of adds some really nice like mid-range harmonics. So yeah, this the, the thing I love about the Volker kick, like I said, it's kind of just focused on just creating this one sound, but there's a surprising amount you can do with it. Yeah. You can do these yeah. bass tones, you can do these kick tones, you can put accents on using the sequencer. Mm -hmm. um, for something so simple, you can get quite a lot out of it. Yeah, I mean, if you're someone who makes uh, sub-bass focused, um, you know, forms of dance music or yeah. hip hop or whatever, yeah. there's yeah. a load you can do with this. Yeah, and absolutely. I think for, again, for the price, um, it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, you can, well, I remember when we got this in for review, I got lost making a sample pack of about kind of 30 kick and bass samples just in the afternoon, just from just tweaking yeah. little things. And yeah. just, it's so much fun, it's really focused, um, it's well worth the money. Absolutely. And that's why it's uh, number four in our number top five. Number four. So, sorry, in at number three is Volker FM. Volker FM. So Vol and, or Volker FM 2. Yeah, so it's worth saying Volker FM, there is uh, the Volker FM 2. Mm -hmm. This is actually the Volker FM 1 we have here. The reason we have this and the reason you will notice that it looks way dirtier than the rest of these. <laughs> so quite a lot of these have been very um, generously yes. uh, lent to us via Korg. Yeah. Um, the a couple of them, which you will notice, are filthy. way uh, filthy. Of uh, my actual ones, ones yeah. that so this is the uh, the ones that I actually own, the ones I have at home mm -hmm. and love and use regularly. Yeah, this Volker FM is one of those. This is yeah. the version one. So what is the Volker FM? So FM synthesis is um, probably most commonly uh, associated with Yamaha's classic DX7 synth, yep. which came out in the nineteen eighties. Which you could could say ruined music altogether. I would argue the exact opposite. <laughs> depends um, how much you love a, a NAF well, 80s synth bass. But there, there is that. But it definitely took it on a course away from lovely warm fatness and we've come back round to it yet again, which is cool. We're starting an argument for another time here. <laughs> anyway, the Volker FM, so the, the, the DX7 is kind of the archetypal FM synth and a lot of FM synths, both in software and hardware, have that. kind of effectively yeah. followed the same um, engine design which uses multiple operators to mm -hmm. modulate one another 
in a variety of different um, layouts, which are known as algorithms. Yep. So what the Volker FM is, is basically a slightly stripped down version of the um, that original yeah. DX7. And so it's a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, one of the things that was the DX7 was really um, sort of infamous for was the fact it was, unless you were Brian Eno, basically no one programmed their own sounds. No, it's just the presets. Now, it's not like I'm not going to say that the Volker FM is the most easy thing in the world to build sounds from, but you can properly edit what's going on with each of the operators. The operators are the FM word for oscillators. Yeah. But it's also got these nice little front panel controls here for which are kind of um, for sort of overarching envelopes, yeah. um, which make it quite easy to do things like just change the kind of attack and yeah. decay natures. Yeah. It's made FM and then you've slightly got, more accessible. Yeah, and then one, one thing that's a really nice touch on these Volker FMs is this velocity um, slider here. So the way that velocity, velocity works with an FM synth, particularly these FM synths, it's almost like um, rolling down the cutoff on a filter. Yeah. You can hear that? Yeah. So I, it's, it's, it's altering, you know, the velocity and the the impact of those different operators, but the way it plays out is it kind of alters how much of that kind of uh, higher frequency so yeah. harmonic yeah. content yeah. is. So it's almost, you can kind of almost use this like you're rolling up and down the cut off filter on an analog synth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the version one um, FM, which is only three voice polyphonic. And the, uh, two the version two is six. Six, so double it. it. Yeah, yeah. And version two actually adds um, sort of even more things like the best thing that the version 2 adds is a really nice little digital reverb which really suits those kind of 80s style FM sounds. Yeah. But in both versions you've got a, a little um, simple ARP um, which really nice for these little... Yeah, straight away it's nice and immediate, isn't it? Little digital ARP lines. So yeah, it's effectively a really cheap and really small um, way to access all of those classic 1980 sounds. It's worth saying as well that like, um, because a lot of these modern FM synths are based on the same design as the DX7, you can load DX7 patches in. Yeah, that's a Now, these, these Volker FMs, particularly this first generation one, um, because they have uh, a lower voice count and fewer operators, it won't exactly um, port across no. um, DX7 patches perfectly. But the some of them version. work, some of them are better. Yeah, yeah. the FM Volker, Volker FM2 yeah. is a lot better for that. Yeah. So why is this not uh, number one in our rankings? Because wow. obviously I own it, I love it, and I, to be fair, still use this quite regularly. What I will say is that it's got a MIDI input here. Very rarely we'll use this using this little touch keyboard. I've got big clumsy hands anyway, and you know it's not particularly easy, for particularly for a polyphonic synth like this, to play it using no. that little touch keyboard. Whenever I do use this, I will plug in either MIDI coming straight out of you know a DAW a or a, a proper controller, yeah. which is what you need to get the most out of it. Yeah, um, which is fine. The what I would say is that this uh, came out in 2016, mm -hmm. and at the time it came out, it was definitely my favourite of the Volker range. Yeah, um, and it was very much a rarity at the time because there wasn't really much in the way of like hardware synths, particularly like budget friendly hardware synths. And although DX7s are not the most expensive vintage synths to pick up because there was loads of them made, um, DX7s do have a bit of a problem with the, they're very noisy yeah. and they're still not the cheapest thing to buy like a second hand DX7. Yeah. So having a modern... And they're a sod to program. Yeah, having, <laughs> so, having yeah. a modern, uh, not quite as noisy, far mm -hmm. cheaper version was a massive revelation at the time. What's kind of changed since then is that actually um, FM synths have come a bit more back into fashion. And although you still don't have that many at this budget end of the market, I mean, Yamaha have got their lovely little um, refa Reface DX7, yeah. which is very nice as well, and That's a similar little easy, cheap... Yeah. Uh, easy to explore and get, sounds. get into it. But then yeah. we've had, since the Volker FM first landed, we've had other um, FM synths like notably Electron's um, Digitone, Digitone synths, Digitone. which are yes. fantastic FM synths. Yep. They're a lot more expensive, but like they are they're a bit more of an evolution, mm -hmm. let you go a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. 
and then actually Korg's own um, Op6 more yes, recently, yeah. which is a much more modern evolution on like yeah. the FM synthesis mm -hmm. idea and with a, a much bigger voice count and can do much more. Again, it's like at least four times the price. Yeah. yeah. But the, the Volker FM feels less like it's a kind of a completely unique thing in yeah. being, you know, I know, I mean, I know what accessible mean. hardware FM. But that said, it's still cheap. It's still amazing. Plug a MIDI input into the Volker FM2 particularly. And like the fact that you can just get those DX7 sounds, like what's it good for? They've, you've got these kind of dark, dark, rich basses. Like what's, so FM synth is really good for um, bass tones. So because it's digital synthesis, you're using these kind of digitally created operators. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're very stable, um, which means you can kind of get very clean. Yeah low-end bass tones yeah um it's also really good for electric pianos and that kind of metallic tone yeah so that you get from like eps or um or things like kind of the nice little kind of faux xylophone yeah, yeah. that kind of noise yeah. um and then sort of weirder um bell-like tones yeah. some real harsh stuff you can get some real harsh FM stuff sounds, harsh yeah. weird stuff yeah nice yeah. basses actually an fm synthesis not necessarily the Volker FM, I'm talking about this, but FM synthesis is also brilliant for creating drums. Of course. Yeah, yes. and you can, while the Volker FM isn't particularly geared up to programming drum sounds on you its own, you can, can quite easily, like, you can do it and you can load patches in. So yeah, yeah. Kind of sneakily make it into a drum machine. Yeah, yeah it's quite versatile. Yeah. Okay, so in the number two, and slightly contentiously at this particular table, yep. is Volker Drum. Contentiously, even with myself, I would say, because I did, I realised that we have um, <laughs> written a piece on Music Radar before, kind of along these lines, and I think I put Volker Drum as number one. Um, which, which goes to show that they're... I'm like, arguing with myself here. At the top, at the top of this, this Volker tree, yep. there's a lot of, like, they're so good, it's really hard. So from, you know, one day to the next, you could be switching this. So let's talk about why this is great, and then I'll talk about why it's not number one. Okay. So why it's great is... It is, it's just one of the coolest drum machines on the market at yeah. any price point in yeah. terms of what it does. It's, so unlike the um, Volker Beats, which is used, it's kind of emulating those uh, kind of classic Roland style drum sounds and using um, analog drum synthesis and things like that, which are quite conventional. The Volker drum is much uh, more unusual yeah. and more unique in what it's doing. So you use a mixture of, um, sort of uh, virtual analog style um, waveforms combined with physical modeling and resonator kind of things. So the, anyone who is an Ableton Live user who's used think, use things like Corpus and the resonator, um, those kind of tones that you get from those yeah. are kind of what gives this um, its own unique character. Each drum sound, so there's six drum sounds inside, each drum sound has two layers, so you can kind of combine these different elements to make sounds which are both punchy and like a lot more kind of characterful. You've got onboard modulation tools to yeah. kind of really shape mm -hmm. um, these far more interesting uh, drum tones than you get from a lot of uh, conventional drum machines. The coolest thing it's got though is this waveguide uh, resonator here, which is, yeah, this is a, the kind of resonator element that we were just talking about before which you can kind of create these tuned tonal effects that so it goes somewhere between kind of tonal resonance, but with when you really turn the decay up, you can kind of be a bit delay-like as well. So if we hit play. So it's just like this amazing little glitchy yeah. You can just tweak the knobs and it's sort of... See what it reminds me of? What? Now, and it's, I think it's slightly derived from it's the original Electribe. Yeah, it's that same kind of like one, yeah. metallic and digital... Yeah, it's just beautiful. ...punchiness. Yeah. 
which is why I would have had it in number one, because that was my first hardware device. Yeah. The ER one. So yeah, it's so easy to just tweak this and like everything sounds sound like a old Tecra or kind of Hessel audio tune or something yeah. like that, just from messing around with these cool little um, uh, resonator elements and, yeah. and the, the drum shaping things. Why is it not a number one? Because yeah, it's obviously absolutely great. Um, and it's incredibly inspiring, sounds brilliant. The only reason this is not at number one, and also the only reason this isn't like my favourite bit of gear in the world, is this single <laughs> output. Yes. So it's, yeah, the, I know what you mean. it's almost like um, it's like someone has cooked the most perfect. You're like your favourite meal, and you can see it through a shop window, and it's like this incredible three course meal with like steak and amazing dessert and things like that. <laughs> yeah. But then you're being forced to eat it through the letterbox, like one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah. It's an incredible drum synth, and yeah. I would use it constantly, but it's just annoying having to have these six drum sounds on a single output. Mm -hmm. And I think when we originally reviewed this, and I stick by this, is that saying that, like, just wish Korg would just take this exact engine and put it into a bigger... Bigger one. Bigger thing. You yeah. know, so uh, Teenage Engineering have just dropped that... Um, New uh, KO sampler, KO2. which is yeah, which yeah. is like an upscaled version with their pocket Pop operators, operators with with more with kind of a bit of that's a still only got one output, but that's fine. But like yeah. the, the even, idea of taking something small, if if Korg took this exact engine, exact design, put it into like something this big, yeah, with like a prop with like a little button sequencer, and to most drumlock. importantly. Individual outputs. Yeah, not too dissimilar to the drum lock size and the layout and that sort of I thing. I would literally order that the moment it was like. Same. I would Absolutely order it and I would order one for all of my friends. It's <laughs> yeah, the best everyone, drum machine in the world. One. As it stands, I absolutely love the vocal drum. It's yeah. so much fun to mess around with and create cool, weird little yeah, sounds. It's so much fun. So much fun. It is. It, so, like you say, any other day you could have picked this as number one. It is my number one. Yeah. However, because of the the lack of outputage, um, it drops down to number two, which means, of course... Number one. Number one is... The Volker bass, were the original three Volkers. Um, again, this is my own one from home. I bought this, uh, I think, I can't remember if this was our original review unit I bought or if I bought one like a couple of weeks afterwards or whatever. Yeah. But we, we it's had old. them in. This is literally is 10 years old, this one. It was yeah. like part of that first production run. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I still absolutely love it. Yeah. The reason I love it is because it's just... I've come around to the decision that this is one of the best uh, little analog mini synths, um, definitely of the past decade, yeah. if not of all time. Whoa, that's a big statement. I like that. Why? Because it is. It's kind of a bit like a three hundred three, but it's kind of like a three hundred three that does weird things. It's it does but better. So the so the the Roland TB three hundred three obviously is best known as the thing that. Um, in created kind of acid house and acid yeah. techno for, sort of for, for kind of yeah for these uh misused kind of sweeping mm -hmm. jumping up and down bass yeah. lines with yeah. the resonance turned up and this can kind of do that 
Yeah. Now, there's obviously, there have been, particularly in the years since this landed, there have been a lot more hardware. There were already hardware 303 clones, but there have been more now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Behringer mm -hmm. have got one for kind of £99. Yep which is much more faithful to the original 303. Yep, yep. Uh, Donner have got that one that came out this year, which is quite cool for the price. Yes. Which yes. Is, looks nothing like a 303, but does sound really well. No, sure. So the Volker Bass isn't quite a 303 clone, but it can do these really nice little kind of acid style riffs still. So the reason this isn't the 303 clone is because uh, the filter is slightly different. Yeah. But also you've got um, things like a slightly different envelope with attack and things like that. The main thing that it can't do that you can do on a 303 is um, put accents in. Right. And that's the one thing that kind of holds us back from being like sure. a proper pure 303 yeah. character. The thing that means that it's much more than just a 303 clone though is these. The fact that it's got three oscillators. Yes. And so a 303, those acid house uh, base synths are kind of single oscillator synths. Mm -hmm. Here you have three oscillators, which are all switchable between um, saw and square waves. So we can kind of do these simple single oscillator kind of acid style lines. And then we can bring other oscillators in over the top, which we can change the pitch on. But because you've got these three oscillators, I mean, it, you can do what we're just doing there and sequencing it kind of 303 style. Yeah, but it can also yeah. do these kind of rich, almost a little bit mini moogish, big kind of yeah. three oscillator synth sounds. Also, it's paraphonic. So if you see these selections here, mm -hmm. it's clear everything. We can put it into paraphonic mode here, yeah. which what this does is basically um, means that those three oscillators are no longer grouped. So if we just put the tuning down to zero. So what this means we can do is we can hit record here. I'm going to just mute these other two oscillators. We're only on this one. Let's go. So there's one oscillator. Now we can jump onto another one and mute it. Uh, set it to a different octave. So we can program three completely different Huge lines from these yeah. three different oscillators. And still use that kind of cool acidy filter here. So it's just, for me, it's just a really fun and versatile uh, and great sounding bass synth. Mm -hmm. And I think for the reason, so the reason I'm putting this in number one is it, for me, this really just uh, captures what is fun and great and useful about the Volker range. Yeah. It's like, it's not overcomplicated. Mm -hmm. There's cool things you can do. Like I said, you can do the paraphonic stuff. You've got a nice little... Um, Got an LFO, so you can kind of create uh, filter modulation or pitch modulation, things like that. You've got the the basic sequencer things. It's worth saying the sequence on here is a little bit more basic than some of the um, other Volkers. So there's no uh, motion sequencing, which you get on some of the other range yeah, where you can create automation. That's that great. Which keeps it a bit, which means it's a bit more simple. But it's just for me, it kind of it really sums up what is great about the Volker range. It's cheap, you know, it's still, you still pick one of these up for 120 quid. Yeah. It's a proper analog synth. It sounds like a proper analog synth. It's got, you know, meaty oscillators. It's got a nice resonant acid style mm -hmm. filter, but it's not difficult to get to grips with. It's not, you're not going to spend, you can save patterns and things, but you're not going to spend hours going through presets and things. No, you just no. get your hands on it. It embodies you just the make nice bass lines. Yeah. It just makes 
yeah. cool sounds quickly. You can plug it in with MIDI and it's just quick and easy to use. Absolutely. And that is what I think is at the core of why these Volkers are still some of the coolest bits of gear on the market is the fact that you they're really accessible to young people or people who are just getting started with yeah. making um, music or electronic music or whatever. They've, they've been a lot of gateway yeah. instruments for loads of musicians. And they're at a price point that you can stick ask someone as for a birthday present or Christmas present yeah. or whatever, but you can actually do a lot with them. And mm-hmm. I think that's what the, the Volker bass sums up for me. I, it's something I bought 10 years ago still use it and it's still something that you know if i just need a just a simple meaty bass line or just yeah. a little kind of acidy riff it's just there you just plug it in I it agree. just takes a few minutes to get a thing yeah so and there's there's a lot to be said for things like the volca modular or the volca drum which mm-hmm. again we've talked about um and how much we love and the volca sample which is like i said i understand why a lot of people love it even if i've never really got on with it that much myself yeah, yeah. But for me, they they do sometimes add that little extra level of complexity. Yes. And like, you know, the Volker sample, there's a bit of setup involving using your phone to get samples on it. And there's mm-hmm. a little bit of kind of diving in to tweak things. Yeah. I just love the simplicity of this. That's, it's, just, yeah. it's just oscillators and a filter. It just makes it cheap and easy. And, loads and of that's fun. why yeah. I think it's the still the best in the Volker range. Well, I, I will. You've convinced me. I've, I feel like I think you're right. I feel like it, it should be the top of the tree. Yeah. Because it's the original and the best. Um, before we, 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 we say goodbye, yep. I want to throw another little thing in yep. to this discussion that we can um, wax lyrical on. And that's where we think they should go next. What's the next 10 years of Volker? supposed to look like so we haven't seen a volker from korg in a little while no, i think the last the updates yeah we've um, seen that was the last new one the, wasn't it? the volker drum was the last new yeah. one and then we saw the updates the volker fm the volker fm2 yeah and the, sample. the volker sample uh so uh, whether there is one coming or whether it feels like there's one due that's a good question of where we go next what do you? What, well, I come on. I you've, got, like, you've clearly you've asked the question. You've clearly got an opinion on this. Well, I've, I've just I've just you know I like thinking about you know the future a little bit, and they haven't touched on any wavetable stuff. They've got wave state, you know the the bigger thing. Yeah, there are there are avenues yet to be vulcred. Yeah, wavetable, uh, granular, that sort of stuff. I uh, haven't gone down that route because Volker Bass is you know ten years old. I feel like. It could get updated, not new bass style, as in some of the misgivings that we've come across, and you add, know, add a bit of automation, maybe yeah, bit of automation. Like that. Yeah. Tell you what, a drive, uh, like uh, not not the new bass one, but like just a, a drive. Drive, circuit. yeah, yeah. Um, I'll tell you, so. I'll tell you where I would like, um, what I would like to see. I'd like to see a Volker um, effects processor. Right. Yeah. And I'll tell you the effects processor. I would like a Volker take on a Roland Space Echo. Ooh, How good would that be? A little be Space Echo emulation, something yeah. like that. Um, like, and then going down, you know, the reverb, like you say, the, the Space Echo thing, like delays or, you know, other multi-effects and stuff. So yeah. there's another avenue of a whole other possibilities. Avenue. Yeah. Come on, Korg, do it. You know you yeah. do. Um, obviously, we've seen loads but of people. But not until you've built my nice six output. <laughs> that Volker first, drum. that yeah. first. But I mean, you know, there are loads of people out there that theorise and do loads of Photoshop mockups, and yeah, hopefully you've tried your hand at it a few times. Yeah, I failed. Yeah, you know, there are better people than I, of course. But um, yeah, let's hope that there is another ten years of Volker. Yeah, we'd love to see another ten years yeah. of them, and these ones are all still, like we said, we're using yeah. them. They're great. If you haven't got any, go out and get one. Um, and hopefully, this top five has uh, kind of, you know, given you some ideas as to which one you might go go for. Especially now it's Christmas, yeah. stocking fillers. And we can come back in six months' time once I've completely changed my mind on... Yeah, we'll do that it again. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Um, like I said, go for it in the comments section. Um, tell us where we're wrong and where we're right, because you know we are. And, um, of course, do all the liking and subscribing that you need to do there too. Um, until then, we'll see you soon. Um, thank you, Si. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back with some more stuff. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>